Today I'd like to do an example of finding the probability for a normal distribution. So what I'd like to start with is IQs. Now, IQ stands for Intelligent Quotient, and hopefully you've heard a little bit about that, and you know that that IQ is supposed to measure a person's intelligence. And we can debate someday, you know, whether it really does measure a person's intelligence or not. But for now, let's, let's say that it does so we, we have something to work with here. Now, by definition, the mean, the average IQ of adults, and let, let's say American adults, mu is 100. 100 IQ is the mean. The standard deviation for IQs is 15. So that means some people have an IQ close to 100, and some people have IQs that are further away, but most people are fairly close to an IQ of 100. And you might guess that this forms a normal distribution, where right in the smack in the middle, the mean, of course, is 100, and my standard deviation is 15. So if I put a couple standard deviations on here, I've got 115, I've got 130, I've got 145 to the right. To the left, I've got 85, 70, and then 55. All right? Now, here's my question. What percent of the adult population in the United States, the United States then, would have an IQ less than 95? That is, I want to know what's the probability that, that my IQ, and this is my x-axis, remember, that x is less than 95. There's two ways we can interpret this. If we randomly pick an adult from the United States, what's the probability his IQ will be less than 95? Or we can simply say, what percent of the entire adult population has an IQ less than 95? The answer to both of those questions are the same thing, either as a percent or as a probability. All right. The first thing we have to do is finish our picture. So, 95 is about right here. This is 85 and this is 100. So here's my boundary line. And so I'm talking about less than 95. I'm talking about all of this area under the curve. We're talking about if we, if we stacked up all the people in the United States, all the adults, we would get for IQs a curve like this. They'd be stacked up like this. And we'd be talking about all these people in this part of the stack over here. So. Whatever the area under the curve is, is then exactly equal to the probability or the percent of people that are less than 95. So the first thing we have to do is to convert this x value to a z-score. So the z-score for 95 can be found by taking 95, subtracting the mean, and dividing it by the standard deviation. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And please keep in mind that you you have to, when you, do, when you do this problem, you make sure you find what this answer is first and then divide by 15. You can't just put in 95 minus 100 divided by 15 on your calculator. You've got to first, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got to first enter the 95 minus 100 and see that that answer is negative 5. You just may know it's negative 5. And then divide that answer by 15. And, of course, the answer is negative negative 0.33. So that is my z-score. All right, step number two is to then take our z-score table, turn the page to the negative z-score, since we have a negative z-score, and look it up. Now, with a negative 0.33, of course, our whole number is zero. So I'm looking for, on the left column, a negative 0 
and negative 0 0.3 is right here. Again, this doesn't focus well. You really should be working this along with me with your own page of z-scores. Hopefully you've got that with you. So here's negative 0 0.3 and bring it over to the 0, 1, 2, 3 to get the hundreds place. This is my other three over here. And if you can read that or not, but that value, I'll tell you what it is, is 0 0.3707. So this probability is 0 0.3707. A two-step process. Convert the x value to a z-score. Convert the z-score to a probability by using the table. So we're saying two things here. What's the probability we randomly pick a person and his IQ is less than 95? Well, that's a, a 0.37 as a probability or 0.3707 if you wanted to four decimal places accuracy. Or another way we can state it is simply approximately 37% of all American adults have an IQ less than 95. Okay, let's do our next problem. I'd like to know what percent of all people in the United States adults have an IQ higher than 125. Another way to state that is I want the probability that the IQ is greater than 125 if we would randomly pick up one person. Okay, So, every single one of these problems, I, I do it this way and I recommend you too. You draw a sketch. Once again, here's my probability. Here is my mean of 100. I'm going to go out. I have several standard deviations marked on here in either direction. Uh, this was one, since we're just talking about 125, let's just look at the right side. So this is 115, this is 130. So 125 as a boundary line is going to be closer to 130, so it's approximately right here. There's my boundary line. So I'm talking about the area on the curve that's greater than 125, well that's this area over here. What percent of the area under the curve have I covered in? will be the exact answer for the probability. Two-step process. Step number one, find the z-score for my boundary line. So I want the z-score for 125, and that's going to be 125 minus 100, the mean, divided by the standard deviation 15. My calculator tells me that that is 125 minus 100 equals divide that by 15, and that is approximately 1.67, rounding at two hundredths. Positive 1.67. That's the first step. Step number two is to convert this z-score to the probability using my table. So we're, we have a positive z-score, so I use a positive z-score table. And 1.67, again, 1.6 is on the left-hand side. There's the 1.6, if you can read it. And we're going to take this over to the eighth column, where I find my 7. And that is the number 0.9525. So I get 0.9525. However, does it make sense that over 95% of all people have an IQ higher than 125. Well, look at the picture. Does it look like I've got 95% of the area shaded in? No. One more time, this table only gives us a reading of the amount of the table, or the amount of the, under the curve, to the left of the boundary line, not to the right. So what this number represents is how much is to the left. Well, since the amount to the left and the amount to the right are complements, all I have to do in my final step is simply realize that any time I'm, I'm looking at the area to the right, I've got to do a third step and subtract my amount from 1. And this gives me an answer of 0 0.0475. And that is a, a tiny bit less than 5%. We're saying just a little bit under, we're precisely 4.75% of the population has an IQ higher than 
125.